Dude, I love this music. Hey, everyone. Welcome to PrepperNet Live. This week, we're going to be covering bug out bags. It's bug out bag week, and we, we thank you for being here. I got some special guests that are in the green room with me. We're going to go through some some announcements, and we're all kind of off the screen. If you guys can hear us and and uh, hear me at least, and I, and I sound good and look good, just say yeah in the comments just to make sure. So um, so tonight is, um, yeah, someone, uh, Echo Papa said that this is going to be a bug out dump. No, we're not going to do that tonight. Nope. Um, that's But we're going to get in some good stuff. So first, I'm going to go through some announcements, and I'll just I'll bring us up so you guys can see who we are here. We, I'll go ahead, and we'll pull it to the side here. So we've got me, we got Beth G in the house, and we got 775 Sleep Dog. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. That's, that's Sheep Dog. I always mess that up. So sorry about that. So we're in the house here. So um, yes, someone said yes. So we're going to go through a couple announcements. Hey. The Prepping Academy is the largest prepping podcast in all the world. Well, not yet, but we're working on it. So Uncle Buck and I, we go through, we're getting ready to interview some people, got some big names lined up. So your favorite, whatever your favorite uh, podcast app, just subscribe, like, give us five stars, and then send us $25 each. Um, okay, maybe not the last part. But anyway, Prepping Academy. That's every week. Um, last week's is in the May. We've already, I just got to post it. My bad. Okay. Next announcements. Hey, I'm giving away a sun oven. This device you put outside in the sun, it cooks your food. It is the absolutely best way to hydrate food, like dehydrated food, because the way it does it, you can, there's a Scott um, engineer 775 did a video on it and said that the sun oven works amazing. And he's an engineer and you got to believe him. It is, um, I'm giving this entire thing away, everything we have, I'm going to give it away. You go to prepping Academy or no preppernet.com slash giveaway and you register to win. And it is everyone is eligible, leaders, everyone, even even Beth. If she well, she could win one. I anyone that wins, I'll let them win. I don't care who it is. So um, no problem at all. If everyone's, I think everybody be okay with that. I'm not going to select a, a, a leader. I can assure you that. So let's keep going. Next announcement is this week is the bug out week. We got Beth G and 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 um, Sheepdog. Um, next week is Uncle Buck and myself. We're going to talk about the Prepping Academy and some things that we got going on. It's going to be a live session, and then we got the Kilted Prepper, which is my city leader for Roanoke, Salem, Virginia. Then we're going to have Larry, my my good old boy Larry from Northeast Tennessee. He's going to be on April seventeenth and May first. I think I have the person in mind. I think I do. So we're going to have a special guest. It could be, I'll tell you on the spectrum, anywhere between Trump and Biden. Somewhere in there, my guy is going to be somewhere in that, in that, <laughs> in that range. But yeah, hey, join us. So I do want to remind everyone, this is, this is for entertainment purposes only. And if that's the case, yeah, there are no. So, but this is mostly for our members. But if you're not a PrepperNet member, you just go and join. But this is to give you guys, PrepperNet Live is to kind of give you ideas of what other groups are doing, what we're doing as a whole, to bring community, um, to, you know, build community. So it is for our members. This is, um, I'm not sure how long we'll be continuing to do this. It's not 799 nice. I have one and wouldn't pay more than $300. Well, great. That is awesome. I appreciate comments like that. Yeah. Uh-huh. So um, anyway, uh, yeah, he's the same person that slams every one of my YouTube videos as well. That's great, Rousey. Yeah. you. Uh, let's keep going before I start doing some things I shouldn't be doing. Anyway, Beth G and Sheepdog is in the house, and we're going to be talking about bug out bags this week. And... We're not going to, okay, we're not going to go through and do a bug out dump per se, um, 
but um, but we're gonna go through some details. Um, I got one thing to type here. Okay, and let's go here to the next slide is right here. Okay, bug out bag. So the reason this came up is because I bought a new bug out bag, the actual bag, not the things inside my bag. So I've got to do some reconfiguring um, and put some together. And so I thought, Hey, it's a good time to go through my bug out bag and why not everyone? I know at our last meeting, we did a raise a hand and I think we did a raise of hands and not everyone has a bug out bag. So this is a good opportunity to go through, create your bug out bag, update your bug out bag, make sure you got the right things in there. And so, so why bug out bags? So that's the question I'm going to ask our guests here. Um, um, sheepdog, why, why does someone need a bug out bag? Well, if you have a remote bug out location or like me, I work out of town. And if something were to happen while I'm away from my home, I need to have the ability to provide for myself while I come back home or to my bug out. So having everything contained in one bag for, uh, water, fire, shelter, food gives me a way to be mobile and get to or from a location I need to get to, possibly without a vehicle, um, on foot, everything self-contained. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Beth, why, why, why do you say, why do you have a bug out bag? Why should anyone have a bug out bag? Well, I don't think I could say it any better than Scott. I mean, if you need to get home, uh, with or without your car. I mean, I have things in that bug out bag that I would use if I were stuck in a traffic jam, uh, like what happened uh, on, I think it was seven, 77 North last winter when those people got stuck for almost 48 hours. So uh, it's not always about just that you have to maybe get home from where you are on foot for some reason, but just to have supplies with you. It's just common sense. It's It's what it's what moms have always done with their with their kids and everything you might need in a diaper bag. Okay, just mm -hmm. extrapolate that to the grown-up world. Yeah. And so the reason we're kind of doing this because we have so many new people across Prepernet, it's crazy. I mean, there's a lot of new people. I mean, we I mean, Beth, the growth in the last month has been crazy, has it not? It's been crazy. And we've had so many people stepping up to be city leaders and uh, it's just taking off right now. Yes. So it has been crazy. Also, you got to get the basics right. Wouldn't you hate for crap hit the fan and, and you mess up on the basics like your bug out bag and you forget some things that are crucial. So let's get the basics right before we start planning our survival retreat and what uniform we're going to wear. <laughs> let's make sure we have the basics down and also to rethink your bag. Um, and, uh, you know, you may have put a bag together, but do you sure you have the right, right items in there? Maybe you do. Maybe, maybe other people have, uh, you know, better items or, Maybe you've gotten smarter and you've learned more and you need less tools back there in your bag. And another one is, hey, you got to maintain and update it. That's why we're doing bug out bags. I know it's a simple thing, but it's what we're doing. So here we go. We're getting into it. So here's some of the goals we want to cover through this. The uh, couple of nights this week is what is a bug out bag? We're going to kind of go through that. Different bags and what do they need it for? Because, I mean, you know, some people confuse their bug out bag and their vehicle bag. We we will get into that with Beth a little bit. <laughs> um, you know, where you, some of the things you got to keep in mind are where are you going? What are the conditions? I mean, is it winter time? Are you in Florida? Are you in you know Michigan? Um, where to start? The bag itself. What what? And we're going to show you our bags and what bags we use. Um. um what goes in? I mean, there's a thousand checklists online. If you think we're just going to give you a checklist of bug out bags, wow, we can't do that. There, there are a thousand of them. And, you, you know, it, it, it you got to start from the beginning on that, though. Who needs one? Men, women, children, or pets? Who needs one? Um, pack it. How do you pack it? Because when you pack a bag, it's important where the weight distribution is. And then, you know, and then how to maintain it. So we're going to go through all these items here. So the first thing is a bug out bag. I have like the technical definition here of what you guys kind of, it's a, it's a, a bag. 
um, for use for emergency. You know, when you pack it, it has all your essential things when you go. But, you know, it probably needs, needs to be a little bit more defined than that. Would you think so? What do you guys think? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, and tell me why. <clears throat> well, you need to be specific to your terrain, your environment, and your fitness level to some extent. But, um, again, you need to cover those basics, water, fire, shelter, food. Um, so we talked before. I have three bags. They're identical in scope. They're just a little bit heavier in material for longer term things. Um, there was a question in there about how many bags do you need? Well, it depends on how far away you are. Um, I may be up to 400 miles. And there he goes. Beth, you want to finish this thought there? <laughs> Jump right in. <laughs> we finished what Scott was going to talk. I'll wait for him to come back because he, he's we, got the thing down to a science with his multiple bags and he travels. Yeah, he does. Lot, so it's very yeah, he does. So we'll, we'll get into that. We'll let him finish when he comes back. Um, a get home bag is a little different. Um, a get home bag is just a, a lot of people, their get home bag is way too big. I think a get home bag, if, usually I would say 90% of the people, work within 30 miles of their house and that's a one day trip. Don't one you think? No, I don't. I do not think a 30 miles is a one day trip. Well, that's, Are, you talking well, about on foot? Are you talking about on foot? Any, all methods. It doesn't mean on foot it could be bicycle, could be hitching a ride. It could be walking down the interstate. Cause again, I'm a believer first 30, 72 hours. You're fine. There's no one smart enough to figure out that all hell should break loose in the first three days. And so I, I think, I mean, we mapped it out the other night, that family that, you know, the, the, the guy could probably walk that in a day. It was, I think his was about 21 miles. Are you talking about the guy who works downtown Charlotte? Yeah. Well, the one off Wilkerson Boulevard. Okay. Yeah. Are you sheepdogs uh, back in the house? Sheepdog, as you were saying, you got three seconds. Okay. <laughs> so depending on your terrain, your distance from home, where you have to go, that dictates what's in your bag and how, how much you need to carry. Yes. So my inch bag has 14 days of food, axe, shovel, I mean, hatchet, shovel, things that I need for longer term, traps, fishing. My two-week bag has, you know, six days worth of food kind of deal. Um, not as heavy on material and equipment because it's a shorter duration. Mm -hmm. And then I have a th everyday bag that goes every day in my truck. And that's just three days worth of food, the ability to procure water, a quick shelter, be as small, minimal, and light as I can so I can get back as quickly as I can. Yeah. So I see people are, are I, I'm telling you guys, there's, there's, if you watch the show, the, the, the thing on um, YouTube is called 72 Hours to Anarchy. And it's story. If the power goes out in all of America today, historically, people aren't going to freak out for at least 24 hours to 48 hours. I mean, you can say what you want. I'm going with history. And historically, anytime a society collapses or, in, or power goes out or something, you do have some time. And that is where we're smart. We're smarter than a lot of people. And I'm I'm saying that as soon as you know something's you're hitting the road, that's by a car. As you guys know, I'm not the biggest EMP freak. Um, I just I think the only EMP that will happen will be localized, but that's just me. So I, that's where I come from. Now you take sheepdog, he could be three states away. So he's got to have a different, definitely a different um method and means. So let's go to this. What's the difference? Right, hold on. Some, some of the comments are just about your 30 miles a day. And let's just say this will be an individual thing based on your fitness level and what the terrain is, I cannot go 30 miles a day with a pack on my back. I know that because I've, I've tried, I've, I've hiked and I've experienced how far I can go and how fast I can go with that weight. So as an individual, maybe some people can, maybe some people can't. So can, anybody out there address, should try it. Yes. Can I address that too? Yes. So if you're bugging out, and you're in a situation where things have collapsed and you're on foot, you know, I, I've been, I spent a lot of time in the mountains. 10 miles a day was a good trip for a day. 
uh, we tried to do 10 to 12 a day. In the real world at night, you can't travel that fast. You have to be very slow, discreet. A majority of it would be at night to minimize your exposure. So you have to get a realistic goal on how fast you can. Ask. Okay. My response is y'all read a lot of books. I'm glad you guys read a lot of them, them um, fiction books. I'm telling you, if power goes out t tomorrow and I'm downtown Charlotte, I can walk to my house straight down the road and no one's going to bother me. I, I mean, I'm just saying, what are you planning for? And if it's a nuclear explosion, okay, that is a little different, sure. But I'm talking if the grid goes down, if the economy fails, I can walk out of my office. I don't work downtown, but I used to. I can walk out of my the biggest building downtown Charlotte and walk home and make that in a day on the sidewalk. Now, and show me in history that when there's a financial collapse, when there's any major disaster, when someone couldn't do that within the first 48 hours without, I'm not talking like a, a hurricane or we don't, I mean, or a tornado. That's, I mean, you don't even, then you can just hop in a car, but in the grid down, that's what I'm saying. You, I mean, a lot of people read these books um, and it's just a walk. It's a bicycle. It's a, they, the scooters will probably still work. So anyway, that's just, we have different opinions there. And I love that. Y'all, I, I'm going to get home and y'all going to be camping in, by, in someone's backyard, downtown Charlotte going, it's going to take me five days to get home. <laughs> I know everybody's coming off on me. Um, and it says, Oh, backpacking 20 miles is my comfort each day. Yes. That's, and we're talking just to get home bag. And that's not even, that shouldn't weigh more than eight pounds. I don't know. Let's keep going. So what's the difference, um, Beth, between a bug out bag? Because a lot of people have things in their car and <laughs> you're laughing and then they have a bug out bag. What What's the difference between the two? Well, well, Forrest, thank you for giving me the opportunity to explain this. OK, because people give me a hard time about what I keep in my car. Um, I keep a lot of extra things in the trunk of my car. I'm, I just what if right extras of this and that. Yes, I know that's not what I'm going to put on my back and carry home. My my get home bag is what we've just discussed and what Scott says, fire, shelter, food, uh, whatever, whatever, water. Um, everything else in my trunk are extra things I'd like to have or extra things for extra people that might be with me. I have empty bags. Whatever the situation is, I have things in my car, various things that you could pick and choose from for that journey. And this is just me personally, how I do it. And that's what I use my vehicle extra space for. Somebody else might have a different answer. Beth, you're back in your car. If you wanted to pull off side of the road and have a fondue party, you've got all the tools in there. Does she not, Sheepdog? Yes, sir. And probably a bottle of Fireball. <laughs> yes. Probably a bottle of Fireball. In case it's cold. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, so, um, Sheepdog, you have a, a bug out, I mean, a, a bug out bag and you have vehicle bags and they, yours, because of your situation, may be the same bag. Yes, sir. So um, because of what I do for a living, uh, there's an opportunity to be stranded actually at work out on the right of way and uh, not be seen for a couple of days. So I have three days worth of food in my truck. I have extra clothes, boots. That's that's just part of my work gear, and then I have an everyday carry bag with a computer, my computer, and all those things, and then I always carry my, you know, sixty mile get home bag. It goes with me every day. So, um, but yeah, I can basically supplement that bag with the supplies of my truck and move. Mm -hmm. But the stuff in my truck is really in reality for my job. If I do get stuck out for a week or something, I have food and water. And, things like that. Yeah, you could be on a job and and literally not even come home for a week and yes, you don't sir. know it ahead of time. No, sir. So oh, I do yeah. have things in my vehicle that supplement my bag. Mm -hmm. And that bag, my my get home bag in the truck, nothing comes out of it. It's, you know, that's there for something drastic. Yeah. So everyone needs a bug out bag. You also need a get home bag. We're just going to cover the, the bug out bag in, in this today. Um, um, 
and this is some information I just literally found on the internet. It's, it all has to do with your terrain, your climate, your health, everything that you, um, you, you um, and you can see there's clothes and everything. When you start thinking about a bug out bag, if you're putting one together now for the first time, I would think summer, maybe because winter, I won't say the winter's done, but I would start thinking spring and start planning for warmer weather. Um, and you got to think through all that before you start putting your bag out back together. But I would say 80% of the things are the same, no matter what bag. Would you, would y'all agree with that? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. And, and uh, you're kind of better off to just build the bag for all seasons. And that way you don't have to worry about not having something if you had to grab it because you forgot to go through it in the fall for the winter or, mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, I keep these small collapsible down jackets. They're like this big compressed in all my bags. That way I always have a, a jacket like this week, last week it was 80 tomorrow. It's going to be 29. Right. So <clears throat> if you build your bag out, to kind of cover all the worst case scenarios in your area, then all you ever have to do is grab your bag. Yep. So here are three bags. I want everyone in uh, in the chat room to check these three bags out. I'm going to give you some time. And one of the bags is mine. One is Beth's and one is sheepdogs. And I want everyone to kind of guess which one is which. This is going to because I think I think they're going to get a couple wrong, but guess which one is which. Now, um, I guess, um, you know, yeah. So I'll give some people some time, but um, I'll tell you, yeah, that's all I can say or I'd give it away. So guess who cares? Hey, Beth, will you block him? Just ban him. What? Ban yeah. Him? Oh, yeah. oh, you want me to just boot him off? Yeah, just get rid of him. Um, so, um, Beth is B Carl. Okay. C is mine. Echo. Mm, okay. Um, Beth C she's okay. So actually, well, there's a delay, so we're going to go ahead and go. So actually I just bought a myself, um, and that is, everyone's been saying, this is the greatest thing ever. It's a Gen 2. And I'm like, okay, I just bought that. So I'm going to be moving all my stuff into that one. Beth's is the the baby blue one. Is yours blue, though? Well, mine's a different color, but it's the same bag. Okay. It's kind of white and, and blue. Okay, and then Sheepdogs is the one. Now, Sheepdog, tell us about your bag system, if you don't mind. So uh, the bag in this picture is my inch bag. And uh, it's a expandable out to 85 liters. So I did that for a reason. It gives me the ability uh, if I am moving between locations and I run across supplies or material, I can increase the size of my pack and add to what I already have to supplement what I have. Um, it's also made to carry for long distances. It has a really good suspension system, really good waist belt. Everything's adjustable for your height and your size. It, it does a lot of stuff to make carrying that comfortable. Mm-hmm. And Beth, is yours, have you hiked with yours, Beth? Oh, wow, Forrest. Thanks for that little softball pitch there. So my bag, so I've, I've learned, and for the ladies, I think this is really important. And Echo Papa just made this comment. It matters how heavy that bag is empty, right? Mm-hmm. So I switched from a tactical Molly kind of a thing to a traditional hiker pack because I'm starting out with less weight from an empty bag um, and it fits more comfortably on me. It fits me better. I can get it fitted to me. Uh, And yes, I hiked recently and I got the bag down to about 23 to 25 pounds and went 12 miles uh, on some, well, it was, it was in Uari forest. So it was up and down and uh, it was, it was a pretty brutal hike. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I learned I learned a lot and I took things out of that bag that I would normally have had in it. Normally, that bag would have had more in it than what I hiked with that day. But um, maybe later uh, in the broadcast, I can share uh, some of my thoughts on making it lighter. 
But I do recommend for women, maybe go with a traditional hiking pack and not the, not these heavy canvas tactical bags. Mm -hmm. So people say mine's heavy. People say mine's not gray, man. Um, I don't care if I have my bug out bag, I can care less about gray, man. I'm going to be, I'll have my rifle in my hand. I, I I don't want to be gray, man. If I have my bag Two is it, I guess it's all where we're starting um, from, from what we, th our idea of bugging out. I, I don't see myself walking to my retreat. I just don't think it's going to happen. I just don't think it's ever going to happen. So I don't think I will have to hike very far. Again, my group, we're well practiced. We're well trained. We have caches. And um, some of the things in my bag I will probably leave in caches for other people as they get to our cache. But I just don't see me ever having to hike up to Miami Beach, Florida, which is where my retreat is, right there on the beach. I just don't see me having to ever do that. In his, the only event that could cause that to happen is the EMP. That's the only event that would have me. Other than that, I'll be I'll be gone before people even realize what's going on. That's just my two cents. Wait, can I remind you of something? Yes. I'm not calling you out. I'm just I'm just making you think about something. Remember when COVID first hit? And you came to the realization that some roads were blocked and they might not let you cross state lines. Remember mm -hmm. when all that stuff was going on early on? So oh, yes. And I had. Unpredictable. Yeah. And I had a we we I mean, we had people at our retreat in Miami. We had people there and they were keeping tabs on everything going on. So. Um, so, yes. But I, but how many days were we in? We already had people at the retreat. Before any road in America was blocked down. So that tells you I had time that I could make a stupid decision and stay back and then things get screwed up. And that's, but that was a, that was a pandemic. Do I unpack um, comms in your bag? That's a good question, Dave. I have a any tone, um, 857. Is that it? Um, sheep dog? 878. 878. I have one of them. And then I have comms where I'm going, but I don't have, um, oh, and one day I will have like a, like a pie star HF, but I don't have that yet. A, a small, um, yep. Yeah, okay. Um, so, um, what else should we cover here on this, on the bags here? So mine is heavy. And again, mine is not gray man. My, my everyday bag is definitely gray man. Yeah. Yeah, and I agree. There's a lot more place now for camo and molly. It's not as flashing mm -hmm. a signal as, as it used to. But where where we live, there's a bunch of people that backpack and hike. So a backpacking pack is not out of the norm at all. You know, nobody really notices it. Right. So. I agree with you. Um, and then let's see here. What's the next slide we got? So, um, so here's a big question. Once you create your bag or you're in the middle of creating your bag, where do you keep your bag, Beth? I keep mine in, in my trunk or in my car because <laughs> it's always in my car. But if, if I'm using my car, if I'm in somebody else's car, I move it to their car. Um, Bobby okay. said that at a meeting the other day when, when she and I ride somewhere together, I not only move my bug out bag to her car, uh, some of that other stuff I keep in my trunk, I move to her trunk. So it's always with me. So let me tell you guys one thing about Beth. She could be going on a day hike and she could not fit a, a stick of gum in her car. She carries everything just in case. And so um, where do you keep your bug out bag, sheepdog? Uh, my everyday, they hang in my garage. Um, so I can grab them and go. <clears throat> my everyday bag, I just stop on the way out, open the door, grab it, throw it in the truck drive out then hang it back up in the evening now, if you're going to georgia what do you do i carry my that big bag that goes in the truck uh so like my my luggage for travel is a uh, patagonia it's called a black hole it has uh, like shoulder straps you can carry it as a backpack and that has some other stuff that i carry when i travel um 
that when I leave the room or wherever I'm at, I'm it goes in my bag. But that stuff stays close to me in the room. And when I leave my truck at night, that bag goes in my room. Right. It doesn't stay in my truck. Yes, I agree. I take mine um, anytime I'm going it, two hours or more. I'll take my bug out bag in my car. Other otherwise, I just use my my get home bag. Um, but you know, if I go to Asheville, if I go to uh, up to Wilkesboro where Son of is, I normally I have provisions in both. So I don't, I mean, that just takes planning and it costs a lot of money, but, um, but do you have any caches, um, sheepdog? You don't have to tell us where they are. Um, yeah. And I also, um, do some work with groups. Okay. Outside of prepper net along my path. And that gives me a place to rest, maybe resupply if I had and a safe haven if I get there. Right. So, uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Networking. If you travel, you know, like a specific area constantly, it's a good idea to reach out and establish connections in that area. Yeah. So I go to Wilkesboro quite often because that's where son of, and that's an hour and 40 minutes and literally in North Charlotte, Concord, Salisbury, Hickory, all the way up there. I know people that I've already that, you know, I know people and you can just, these are the type of people I can just stop in and go, hey, guys, I need some help here. You know, crap's getting ready to hit the fan or it's hit the fan. And so that's always kind of good to have. That's, I mean, PrepperNet is nice in that aspect. You can get meet people. So some of the things in the bug out bag, I, I'm going to let I'm going to let Sheepdog just cover this because he just he narrows it down to three things. But I, I go a little bit more in depth than he does. But go ahead, Sheepdog. So, yeah, the basic your basic necessities in a bag are water, fire, shelter, food, water first. And uh, if you've got three days worth of stuff and you're moving fast, you're trying to cover ground, you don't need – everything's minimal. You don't need as much. And that's the difference in my bags is each bag is kind of supplemented with more stuff. But you definitely need a way to source water uh, and store water for movement because you want to be able to move. And you want to be as small as you can be and minuscule and in and, and hiding. So um, a majority of my travel will be through rural areas and I really don't want to draw any attention to myself. So uh, food and food preparation go together. Um, you know, most of the bags are a lot of dehydrated meals. Some of them are MRE supplemented um, clothing. Like I said, we all, you always have extra clothes, socks, especially mm-hmm. socks are probably your most important part of clothing next to a good jacket. Then shelter and bedding, having the ability to provide a quick, handy shelter that you can get up and be hidden in. Um, I use those uh, survival blankets. It's a camo outside with a reflective interior. Use it as a lean-to or a a A-frame shelter you can slide in. You're not wrapped up in mylar. You still have that heat. Uh, First aid, all your bags should have a boo-boo kit for everyday little blisters, cuts, bruises, things, and an IFAC or a blowout kit. Um, all three of my bags have chest seals, nasopharyngeal tourniquets, mm-hmm. um, all those things for serious injury. Um, my, my get the, the main bag I carry every day, the tourniquet is on the outside of a pocket and inside that pocket is a blowout kit. Um, hygiene is important as well. Um, just being able to brush your teeth or wash your face with a, just to like wipes. I use dude wipes or wait till after hunting season and buy the scent free hunting wipes Mm -hmm. and use those just to get yourself clean. Basic tools, Swiss army knife, multi-tool, um, a really good knife, full tang, heavy, uh, heavy back, 90 degree angle, uh, lighting. So on lighting, I carry red lights. I don't use white light. I carry a white, a, a white, a red light. I always carry comms. Um, I have comms in my truck and I always carry an additional HT and extra battery. Um, then travel aids. Uh, I keep a gazette here in my big bag, especially. Um, and there's always a gazette here in my vehicles for the areas I cover, which is North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, and Georgia. So I have to have four of those. Um, self-defense. Obviously, you have to include 
uh, uh, I prefer a rifle over a pistol, but a pistol at the minimum and multiple ways to reload it, multiple magazines, because the, the stuff you have with you is all you have. So I usually carry a high cap pistol, four high capacity magazines, a rifle, and at least seven additional magazines for the rifle. And then just miscellaneous things um, that you'll need as you as you progress. It'll make your life a little easier, a little more comfortable. Um, my, my secondary bag and my tertiary big bag all have hammocks in them. My little yep. regular bag does not have a hammock. I'll be digging a hole in the ground somewhere. But um, I do have something to sleep on, something to sleep in, something to sleep under. Um, so if you just put three tarps in your bag, little, you know, nine by eight tarps, nine by five tarps, you can be off the ground, be under a shelter and wrap up in a tarp. Yeah. So um, there's a lot of things that make it easier. And we were talking about weight earlier. Um, when I started backpacking, everything weighed 100 pounds. I didn't care what you did. You were carrying a 100 pound pack. Now everything's smaller, lighter, better. You can really cut down on your weight and be really, really comfortable. So, um, but yeah, you, you really need to focus on water, uh, especially yeah. for a short term, a three day bug. You got three days, you know, it's going to be three days to get to your location. You still have to stay hydrated every day, all day. So have a way to secure water, store water, purify water. So my bag has changed so much as well because my kids are now adults. So, you know, at one point I'm having to carry, you know, everything. And so my bag has gotten smaller and, and still I have my wife and uh, some other people if I was to walk. So I would be carrying m more than some of the, that the is it probably is not needed, but I'd rather start out with too much and then dump it as I go. And that's kind of what Beth, your kind of thing is like, I'll carry everything in my car and if I'll take what I need and then, and then just go. Right. I will pick out what I want to take from the car. And if uh -huh. I have a passenger with me, we'll load up that bag, customize mm -hmm. it based on the situation. But, so I, I, have have my, but I have my get home bag completely ready to just put on my back. Right. And go. Yeah. So I have changed my, I always carry, I think all three of us always carry a gun. Um, and I have changed, I have put something in my everyday bag that I didn't used to have. And I'm not sure if I should tell you guys, it's a 22 pistol with a, a tool that makes it quiet. I just feel that that could be very useful um, in my everyday bag, my get home bag, I guess my everyday. So um, that's good. And so, Beth, anything on there? I mean, I, I gosh, I, I am not going to ask this question. I am not asking this question. I mean, is there something else that females need to think of any different than any of this or not really? Well, I mean, to be realistic, I couldn't carry all that. And so I want to, when I started out my hike last weekend. I you don't have a toothbrush? I, I did put the toothbrush in there. <laughs> you carried all this last week, but in small, in small items. Okay. So realistically, uh, there's only a certain percent of your body weight that you can carry on your back. And, and women need to try to carry less on their shoulders and more on their hips. And there's ways to pack your bag and stuff like that. Um, I want to carry all that. I want to be a sheep dog, right? But I have a physical size, weight, structure limitation. I'm female. Mm -hmm. And so um, I realized through my hike and that I need to, um, hopefully I'm hiking with other people. We can share the load like what hikers do on the Appalachian Trail or Pacific Coast Trail. Um, I have to be realistic. Um, maybe there's women out there that can carry as much as sheepdog and great. I, I wish I were one of you. Uh, but when you're asking me, is there something separate that a female want, might want? I would say in an urban environment, in the woods, you're fine. You know, go behind a tree and pee. But if you're urban, um, the whole process of squatting down somewhere behind a building, I don't know, that might get a little dicey. So I would carry, and I'm sure most women know about this, like a go girl device here. Uh, Are you really showing that on oh my gosh 
allows you to stand up and pee and you can like wrap a jacket around you, you know, you could, and you should practice, trust me. Cause, cause I had a little mishap one time. I'm just being honest. Um, you know, the standing up peeing thing is so nice. nice. In an urban environment. I prefer just if it's in the woods. Anyway, um, that would Sheep be. Sheepdog has one of them as well. Oh. Sheepdog. <laughs> it might be built in. <laughs> That's that's nice. Um, do you carry fireball with you? That's a question. From your gap. No, okay, we won't ask that question. Um, let's go to the next. So, so has your um, um, sheepdog has your bug out bag changed over the years? Oh yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. T um, tell us the reasons why. I mean, there's there's. I mean, just tell us why you think. So it's kind of like this. Said you, you. So when everybody starts out, they find a list somewhere from somebody, right? Like that list you just had. Mm -hmm. And then what you end up doing is you start taking everything to the nth degree, right? Um, so what you have to do is focus on water, fire, shelter, food. Those four things. Everything else is a luxury. You need a good knife. You need a good multi-tool. Those, those, those are the things you need. Uh, you need a firearm. You you need to be able to defend yourself. Um, but you have to find the best gear, lightweight, quality gear that fills those those needs. But you don't want unitaskers. You want multitaskers. Mm -hmm. So you try to find something like a knife. A knife will do everything. You can you know make things. You can split wood. You can do it all with a knife. A hatchet's better, but it's not realistic. It's heavy and it's bulky. So a good knife kind of takes away a couple of things you don't necessarily need. So as I've, as I've evolved and gear's gotten better, lighter, then I've moved to where I have exactly what I need and nothing else. You're right. You know what I mean? So yeah. <clears throat> like a, you know, a hat, just a hat, right? Any mm -hmm. hat, a baseball hat, anything in your bag keeps the rain off your face can keep you warm and it's just a hat, right? You just throw the hat in the bag. Um, now my bigger bag, I have some concealment items and things in there because in that situation, I'll be long-term living, moving, and I need to be as concealed as possible, but they're multitaskers. So that's a everyday wear item. It's not a, I carry it because I may need it. I carry it because that's what I'm going to wear as I'm moving. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's water, DW, you know, durable, water resistant, fast drying, wicking. So in the heat, it's pulling the, the sweat off of me in the cold. I'm drying quicker so I don't get as cold. Um, so you minimize your gear, but you maximize its usage. And that's how I've kind of evolved it, where I have things that do multiple items that are do that are quality items that help me work better. And, I, and as you learn, you learn what you need. You don't need three multi-tools. You need a multi-tool. Right. Yeah. So, and also yes. one of the reasons, one of the things that changed on why I wanted a bigger bag is because um, I want to put my AR in my bag and my other bag, it wouldn't fit right. I had to put that little the the what is the, the folding thing on the back yes. for your and I didn't want to do that. And so, and this one, it fits perfect in there. And I, and I, because everybody's, well, I probably won't be carrying an AR walking down whatever road I am. I'll have a gun on my hip. It will be concealed because we're just talking the first 12 hours of the crap hitting the fan or whatever it is. So that's one of the reasons I want to change my bag a little bit. I can fit not heavier things, but a bigger thing like, um, m like my gun inside the bag. Um, so, um, Beth, what has changed with yours? It sounds like you're taking stuff out every time you go. Before long, you're like, I don't need a bag. <laughs> well, what has changed with mine drastically is, um, especially after our last trip to Uwari, was just the realization of my physical limitation and what I can carry. And so I'm always looking for, um, well, like Scott said, multi-use items. Oh, sorry, shoot dog. Uh, multi-use items and um and lighter weight and so i do have i do have something that i'm going to try do you want to see it 
Um, is it safe? Is it PG-13? Yes. Okay, and let me it, see it then. And it may be a disaster. It may be a flop. But okay. when I was um, hiking and I, you know, my tent, my, uh, my pack, I have an ultralight tent. It's only two pounds. Uh, mm -hmm. A very awesome sleeping bag that's lightweight. But they're also still bulky. Uh, again, I'm just looking for ounces to get rid of. And um, even tarps, like I have the same kind of um, reflective on one side, camo on the other kind of tarp. Think and ditch the tent, go tarp. But this is even more lightweight. This is a painter's plastic tarp. Let me see. What? Okay. Painters, you get it at Lowe's. Yes. Plastic painter's tarp. What are you going to do with that? I put grommets on it with some Gorilla Tape and some grommets around it. It's cheap. It's not meant to, it's six ounces and it's not meant to be something that's going to last a long time. Right. But I could put this up as a shelter and look how small and light it is. And I have used one of these as a shelter before in survival school. Um, and in that situation, we were able to, to be in near a fire and it actually like a greenhouse was able to collect the heat and circulate inside. Then it just it's melt super, super shelter. No, it was part of a super shelter. Yeah, okay. Uh, so look, my next trip, and here's the key. Take trips. Go camping. Try this stuff out. I'm going to try this out. What's well, the, the Hilton. Trip? I can get my car and go home now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah now, for us, not everybody stays at room service. Yeah, at the Hilton, you know, I put my tent out, <laughs> and, you know, the floor is kind of nasty. But, you know, I, then I put a tarp down to make sure that, you know, I wear my socks so I don't want my feet to touch the floor. So I will say this. Um, one of the things I forgot is where I keep my bag. My bug out bags stay at my house unless I'm going two miles or two, two hours or further. They stay at my house. Um, and then actually my bags are locked up. Um, I have a one of these metal cabinets as a it's a it's a it's a fireproof metal cabinet. The stand up type. They're hard to come by. And both the doors open. I put them in there and I've got hooks in there because I got a lot of money in my bug out bag. You know, we all do. And I just, if someone breaks in, it's going to take, I mean, I'm sure they can get a crowbar and get in there, but it's going to take them some time. But, um, but mine has changed. Cause again, I have no, no more kids. My last kid is a, um, lots of germs on the floor. Dang right, Carl, you got to protect yourself. And, and, you know, sometimes <laughs> there's condensation from the air conditioner. You know, you got to protect yourself from the leaks. And so, um, but, um, so mine's changed because of that. And also another one, and I know this is a fact for both you guys, you've gotten smarter. So you don't now have to carry a lighter, a Bic, you know, ferro rod, um, you know, 10 different ways to make fire. You can carry, you know, that you got, I got, you know, a, you know, a, a strike, you know, a feral rod that I can start a fire almost and I've got wood in there, fat wood. I've got everything, but the, the smarter you get, and it's the Firefox guy. You remember the Firefox series? Mm -hmm. The guy, he said, the more, you know, up here, the less you carry back here. And so we've gotten smarter. So our bug out bags have changed. And so for those of you starting out with new with your bug out bags, um, just don't go to a list. We're going to, we can save you many steps. If you listen to some of the things that experienced people have and their ideas is don't just don't go to a list and start buying stuff. Go to someone and say, Hey, preppy squirrel, how do you carry what, what forms of, of, um, fire starters do you carry? And then preppy squirrel will go, Hey, I used to carry this and this and this. Now I just carry these two things or Hey Beth, what do you carry for, um, you, you know, tarps and you go, boom, you're making one. I think that's, um, I have the other type of tarp that you, it's like a, a rain fly that goes over top of a hammock. I, and that's just about as light as that, that thing is very light. I yeah. I carry that's really, really lightweight. They, they're compacted. They're this big. They're yeah. That's what down. I carry. And, and they don't really weigh anything, and they're less not, visibility than plastic or Tyvek. Tyvek's really good if you're on the yes. AT and you're through hiking. It's really good. Yeah. If you're trying to be invisible in the woods, a big piece of white fabric strung between the trees is going to be a little visible. Yeah. So anyway, but in, anyway, I would say get do more research on the beginning because you'll 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 catch some things that Beth say or Sheepdog or you know. Uh, Echo Papa or, I mean, there are people, very experienced people 
and ask them and then and then go to that that way you're skipping years of knowledge and practice and you know taking this stuff out to you know on a bug out weekend and because you you you're just you're you're taking your knowledge and just other people's knowledge and it's helping you guys so i would definitely talk to others just don't go by the list and we've done that locally uh taking people out with their bags and yes. people have found out the hard way what works and what does mm-hmm. even the yeah. fire starting when we did the fire class a lot of people had their fire starters they used and they found out that they didn't work so yeah the more you practice the more you do the better the more you learn what you have works or doesn't work Hey, and if your group, I know Asheville does a bug out weekend. Charlotte does bug out weekends. Um, the, Northeast Tennessee does. Hey, if your group doesn't do that, hey, get to your leader and say, hey, and you start it. Y'all go camping one weekend, hang out, and and, and practice. So the next thing is we do have a list, <laughs> and I'm going to post this. It's just a basic list. These are some of the things you need to have in your, your get home bag. And if you go to excuse me, preppernet.net, I'll post it there. And it's just a basic list. I partnered with this company that put this together years ago for me. And it, it's like, you know, it doesn't tell you, it says have a knife, a fixed blade knife. You've got to figure all the stuff out, but this kind of is like generic things you got to have in there. Toothbrush. I mean, I'm not going to, every bag I have has a toothbrush. Um, and, you know, it, it's just every bag I have has a ferrule rod. I mean, it's, it's some of the things are the, you know, and so um, here's a question. We'll start with sheepdog. What three things do you have in your bag most people do not have? This is your get home bag. No, sorry. This is your bug out bag. What so three I things? carry uh, gators. Um, oh, for water? Gators. Yeah. yeah uh, they go about halfway up my calf. Yep. They keep debris and water out of my boots. Um, I carry a thing called yak tracks which you add to the bottom of your boot. It's like a flat crampon for icy, snowy conditions. So you have really good footing in snow or ice. You can keep moving. And I carry uh, uh, a gillied boonie hat. And it allows me, if I had to make a quick shelter, I can sit down, unfold the uh, sniper veil on the front that's gillied, cover myself up. I can wear it backwards, throw it over my bag, and break up the outline of my bag and make myself less visible as I move. Nice. Very nice. Okay. Beth, what three things do you have in your bag that most people don't have? Mm, okay. Um, well, I already showed you all the go girl that women might want to have. I have. That's called a go girl? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is. Okay. Ones. That I thought it was called a diva cup or something. I don't know. Is oh, awesome? all right. Here we go. Never mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> I wasn't going to pick it up. But, you know, hey, I'm kind of past needing one of these. But um, for young girls, younger okay. women, okay, okay. That it's it packs very small and light. Okay. And you don't have to worry about where what, what time of month it is. Okay. I have a uh, Garmin inReach device which I actually pay for a subscription to. Um, so I can send uh, messages through satellite uh, mm-hmm. if, it's, if it's available. Okay. Uh, it also has all kinds of mapping and uh, you know G- GPS trails and city, city streets and trail maps and everything. So okay. uh, to me, it's worth the subscription that I pay for that, that I can send messages to uh, my loved ones. And uh, well, Scott, I guess mine was, I'm sorry. Dang it. Morris, you have to edit that. Uh, okay. So, um, yeah, I, I carry Atlas to school every Is state. That yeah. <laughs> yeah. The FBI coming now. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I don't know. An if Atlas? It's the Atlas. But I, Holy I want cow. Smaller Is it a world Atlas? <laughs> no, it's a Gazette tier, and it gives you topo, and they're really good maps. So I keep them in my trunk for every state that I possibly drive through, which is okay. which is up and down the southeast, up to Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, so, yeah. That's your three things. So here are my three things. Um, one is I carry an alarm system that I created with um, – it has um, – I think it's called spider wire. 
and it goes into a clothespin and there's a nine volt battery in there. And when someone trips that or walk across that, it has an electronic match that shoots off of fireworks. And you're and all this is kind of light and it goes in a little um, Ziploc bag. So I have enough to go around my perimeter. And so if a deer or animal was to walk, it, it will it will let me know that something is in my area. Um, and that is old school using literally spider wires like fishing wire, if you guys don't know. And it's you can look it up on uh, YouTube. And it's a clothespin that you put the, the thing in. So if something pulls it, it connects the two contacts. The battery goes to the, the, the electric match and a firework goes off. I know someone's close or something's close. And it scares the crap out of them and me. So we're all good. So I made that. Um, and, um, I have, I have that system and that's a pretty cool system. It does scare the crap out of you when a deer walks by or something, but you know, I'd rather be safe if someone's come to my area. The next thing I carry is a, um, a plastic bottle cutter. So you, you find bottles everywhere. And this is a little jig you can put in a, a stump or something and you take a plastic bottle and you can just pull it and it will make cordage. You familiar with what I'm talking about, sheepdog? Yes, sir. And I don't know the name of it, but it can just, it cuts a plastic bottle into like an, an eighth of an inch or probably three sixteenths of an inch or so. Um, and you can use it the tie. I mean, plastic is very sturdy and it's pretty cool. Um, and then the other thing that I carry is a, it's a home patrol, um, by Uniden. And, um, and what it does, it gives me, I can listen to all the frequencies around me and it's a, and it, it, it's pricey. It's like, I don't know, four or $500, but it, it can tell me, it also has a thing on there called close call. So if anyone's transmitting near me, it stops on that frequency. I can see it. I can see it. Um, the frequency, I can key in on it and listen to any frequency near me. Other than that, I can listen. I, I take that everywhere I go. That's in my everyday bag. Um, you can listen to police, fire, medic, if they're not digital. Um, and there are ways you can listen to them if they're digital with some modifications. Um, but I take the home patrol with me everywhere I go. The close call thing is is excellent. That's the three things I take that are not in most people's bags. So um, someone put Grim Works has that. Oh, yes, they do. Yes, Gary S. Yep. So that's a pretty cool. I've used that many times. So the, the plastic cutter there. So let's see what else. Okay. Who needs a bag? Who in your family needs a bag? Everyone, don't they? Yes. Do you have one for your pet, Scott? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Sheepdog? Danny has a yeah, nice come on. Yeah, uh, <laughs> okay. uh, got my picture now. This is just dropping. Me <laughs> uh, yeah, Gary has a Mountain Smith uh, dog pack. Uh huh. Uh, and what's in the Gary. the pack for the dog? Uh, collapsible water bowl, collapsible food bowl, mm. and a way to carry food and any it, medicine he may need. Any photos of past dog friends or anything like that? Uh, no, sir. No. <laughs> no, that's his little bag to get get him out. Um, and it's a uh, high visibility red. He's a well, you know, he's a giant white dog anyway. You can see him, but mm -hmm. that red just gives the ability to see him if he were to run or other people. You know, it's just a way for him to be seen. But yeah, um, he has a bag. Uh, Megan has a bag. Megan has a couple bags um, of different levels and yeah we carry for the dog me and megan so do you have one for your pets or are they are, you, are they ziploc bags oh, yeah. I, I prefer not to say okay okay <laughs> ziploc bags <laughs> so uh, the ziploc bag thing that people are saying are um yeah <laughs> I always tell people, if you're coming to the retreat, if you bring your animal, it better be in a Ziploc bag because there are no animals, no dogs. I don't care how much money you, I don't care how much money you've spent on training your dog. I promise you, I can get your dog to bark. Plain and simple. I proved it. 
friend had some expensive dogs and we had a steak dinner on it and I got a steak dinner from it. Uh, he wasn't expecting me and I knocked on his window of his kitchen, but they still barked. So anyway, they can get you killed. Okay. So, and how about um, parents or, um, or people like, I don't live near my parents, so I don't have a bag for them, but if you bug out with other people and they're coming with you, you got to have some stuff for them to carry. Right. Y'all agree with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it may be wise that if you're bugging out and you have your family and all of a sudden the teenage, that kid next that lives next door is looking at you like, uh, where y'all going? Mom, you know, my mom and dad's still at work. It may be smart. may not be to say, Hey kid, Throw this backpack on your back. Let's go. <clears throat> I don't know. Um, and, or, you know, a neighbor sees you and you're, you're going out walking or someone. If you have the resources, fill that bag up and make them carry it. I don't know. Just a thought. So anyway, let's go to the next slide here. Okay. How, how important is it to pack your bag and plan in your packing, Scott? It's really important. Um, even if you're just backpacking, you want the things you use the most at the top weight. Mm -hmm. It depends on the frame of the pack, how you load the weight. Um, I run internal frame packs, weights up high, um, external frames of weights in the middle, I believe. But you want the items you use, like your rain gear, your, your first aid boo-boo kit. All those things need to be near the top and accessible when you need them. Um, and, you know, like the problem, if you're leaving like a city to go into the into the woods to move, um, your weapon has to be accessible, but it has to be hidden. So, mm -hmm. um, but it's very important how you pack it. And you need to pack all three the same way if you have multiple bags. So you pack everything the same way. So your first aid kit is on the left or right side and everybody knows where it is on all the bags. Your rain gear stays at the top of your pack. Um, everything in my bag is in a dry bag mm -hmm. inside the pack. Um, that way the pack, you know, the new bags are really a lot more waterproof than they used to be, but there's still the opportunity to get stuff. Mm -hmm. So everything inside a dry bag, I now have everything dry, safe, accessible. And I have a dry bag I can use for water together, water and gather water with my dry bag. So having things packed in a specific order in every bag and consistently across whatever you're using helps a lot in finding things and getting other people directed to where to go get things. Mm -hmm. Also, it, it makes a difference in, in the weight and where you put the weight in yes, the bag sir. as well. Yes, sir. And it all depends, yeah. again, know the frame you're using. Yes. Uh, we had a local guy in the Charlotte group send out a, a picture for external frame packs versus internal frame, mm -hmm. where to place the weight. And, and that really does matter. Yeah, it does matter a lot. Also, you don't want to stop on a trail or you're walking and you go, crap, I need X whatever. And it takes you 10 minutes to find it in your bag. You need to know kind of mapped out in your head where everything is. Um, yeah, so both my bigger bags are top load bags. Uh -huh. Um, but the biggest bag is a top load bag with a panel you can panel load it to so I can lay it down and unzip it and see everything in that bag. I don't have to go digging through, I can just lay it down, unzip it, fold the panel back, yeah. and I can see yeah. everything in the bag. Um, the my middle bag is a has a side zipper. I can open it on the side and open it and see what's in that bag as well. Mm -hmm. So it's really important if you have a smaller pack to be able to unzip it all the way and lay it flat. That way you yeah. can see where everything is. Yep. And securing things inside. It's a good idea to have a pack that has a way to suspend things inside between in the pack itself. Right. Like it's my emergency like mollies, my or, uh, straps, like my mm -hmm. emergency tarp. I, I have two straps. I put it in, pull those straps across, and it stays flat on my body. And it is interesting that as as the crap hits the fan, as the count, as the time starts, as the crap hits the fan, in the beginning, you have to be somewhat 
you know, gray man. You don't want to be carrying your rifle and walking down the street. And as times as, as it gets worse, you know, you're going to be having, you know, your hat and your smock on your gun in your hand. I mean, it's, things are going to change as things, as things, um, it get worse. So, um, Beth, tell us about your pack. I mean, you should be a pro at packing. I'm just saying <laughs> what you get in that car. I mean, <laughs> Toyota would love to have you on a commercial. You can fit a whole house in here. <laughs> okay. So my, you know, my bag stays packed. It's separate from everything else in my trunk. But I did learn um, after that last Juari hike from one of the, from one of the hikers in the Charlotte group, a female, um, that women need to even put more of the weight distribution so that the uh, pictures that Sheepdog was referring to that showed where to put the weight in the packs, women a little bit different even to create more of the um, weight down on the hips and off the shoulders. But uh, hmm. definitely one thing I've learned is to color code my internal bags so I'm not searching, searching, rifling, throwing everything out. I can just zero in on that color, grab that pack out. And then the, the hiking pack that I was talking about in the beginning, uh, it has a lot of the, like Sheepdog was talking about keeping things at the top. So it had like the outside top zipper and then you open that and then there's the inside tops. It had, it had a lot of different places right. where you could prioritize where you keep things. So um, again, though, that's not something I learned and understood the value of until I actually spent a few times living out of the pack and, and doing it. Well, I learned it was important well, 10 years ago. I th at the first prepper camp, I think that's 10 years ago, I'm sleeping and I have my, my get home bag and I threw my keys in there. And that's when I learned where placement in a bag is very important. I threw my keys in there and, you know, I fell asleep and I reached in there around three o'clock in the morning. And because I wanted to, I was trying to um, grab um, power thing to my phone so I could charge it. And I hit my keys, the alarm on my keys. And I'm at the campground uh, before they opened Tent City up. I'm at the campground, and all of a sudden, my alarm on my car goes, dee, dee, dee. and I then start panicking. I'm like, where's my flashlight? And I'm trying to dig down there and find my keys. And so having placement for everything is important. And the next morning, the funny thing was I'm in the line there for the showers and the, in the, in the bathrooms there um, at the campground. And I wasn't going to let anybody else bring this up. I was going to bring it up. I'm like, did y'all hear that idiot last night? That was their alarm went off at like three in the morning. <laughs> 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 and it was me because I didn't place my keys in there and that i mean just think if you're if you're bugging out and you do something like that because who, who's going to leave their house without their keys you're going to have your keys so anyway let's go okay next question have you hiked your camp with your bug out bag why is this important so i think beth's kind of touched on this a lot but but sheepdog have you yes yeah and it and like i said we we did that trip we've done a couple trips here locally that way and you mm -hmm. really find out what works how comfortable your bag is how good your shoes are all these things matter and the only way you're going to know is to go use it and uh, if you don't use it and you you know if, if you have a pair of boots that sit and you've never worn them and those are your bug out boots you're going to be real real sorry real fast so you need to break in stuff. You need to figure out exactly what works, where it's at in your bag. Does that work? Yep. All these things matter. And the only way to do it is to be out where you have no choice, but to figure out what's going on. Yep. Beth, I think you've commented like five times on this, but you've, you've taken your bag, you've gone out and your bag has changed every time you go out. Correct. It gets honed. Can we just say that? Okay. Oh yeah. Cause you know, I don't, it's not as bad as you describe it, but okay. I've also, I've also hiked and uh, taken classes where um, literally without a bug out bag. And so one of y'all touched on it earlier 
I think you did for us that the more skills you learn, the less you have to carry. So um, if you have an opportunity to take kind of a survival type class, you should because it's only going to feed into carrying less in your pack. Mm -hmm. Learn yes. some more skills. And a lot, um, I know it's the urban prepper. He has a very unique system and how he does. It. I think he <coughs> a little overkill, but he had you know, everything's color coordinated, but he has modular systems. So my, my, my get home bag used to be a part of my, my, my bug out bag, but my bug out bag is big with lots of room now. I don't know. That's why I'm going to, I've got everything laid out right now. I've got four bags laid out and I'm going to go, I'm going through each one of my bags and making sure that, you know, I may find out that my big new bag that cost me a fortune may be too big, but I do want to hide that. I, I do feel like I need to hide that the AR in there and some, and some rounds. And so like, for an example, um, I have an AR, I have a, like a, a strap that grows around my body that is AR magazines can fit in there. So it can, I can carry, you know, up to probably 10. I won't carry that many, but that's in my, in my bug out bag. I'm not saying I'm going to take all them, but starting out, I may. And then I got, but you got to hide that stuff so you can have that stuff in a sense. So that's why I went with a little bit bigger bag. Cause once I get into situations or things have really deteriorated, some of that stuff's coming out and I'm going to be using it or, you know, then I'm going to be able to determine what is important now that I thought was important. You know, so a lot of times we think, Oh, this is going to be important. But all of a sudden we get in a situation and go, wait a second. You know, last night I didn't even, you know, need a sleeping bag. It's warm enough. I ditch the sleeping bag. So things will change as, as, as you go. And that's why, you do have to go, you do have to test it, but still when you're shooting rounds or you're hiding and there are people that are coming up and things change and, and some of your things in your bag, absolutely. Some will become, some things will become less important and some things will become more important. Like for one of the things I do carry, and I know you guys have this as well, is I have um, face paint. To paint my, my face, it's the real kind that breathes, it's some protection as well. But here's a question for you guys. I know both you guys for a fact. Both you have you have plates, armor plates. Do you bug out with them? So we're we 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 have all bought plates. I have plates, but yet that's not in my bug out bag. I mean, I, there's no way I could carry them with me so we literally bought them to keep them at our house while we bug out i mean right i mean i they're like six pounds each and i'm already struggling with a 25 pound pack and a lot of people in the comments have talked about uh carts and dollies and i do keep a dolly in my car and if the situation allowed for it i would I would put it on there and, and pull that as long as I could to keep the weight off my shoulders. Mm -hmm. um, but you're right. I don't, we lost, we lost sheepdog, but um, yep. I can't, if, if, and especially it's a front and back plate, that's 12 more pounds. Yes. What am I going to do with that? So you're right. Yes. I don't, I don't have it in my bug out. And so that's things that probably need to be at your retreat or somewhere where you're going. Mm -hmm. um, because I have plates, I have side plates. I have, you know, my, I have a, you know, Kevlar helmet with my NVGs that better be in my place. Cause I'm not going to be, I'm not going to carry that. I, I mean, I'm not sure I can make it with my, my, my entire tactical gear on. I, I, I can't walk. I mean, it would take me a, it take me 12 years to get to Miami, Florida with that on. <laughs> but I, yeah. Sheepdog, what do you have to say about that? Just leaving your plates behind? I think we lost him again. He's, he's good. You know what? It's past his bedtime. I didn't want to tell him about oh, he, he gets up at like four in the morning, honestly. I know. It's past his bedtime. So oh, no, no. We can get up at five. five. Oh, okay, five. The internet, I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> but, yeah, plates are a big deal. And uh, 
like I said, I have uh, I carry a plate in my everyday carry. Okay, I can dump that bag. There's a lot of stuff in it I won't need. And uh, is it just a square one, like a, a twelve by twenty four or something like that? He's gone again. Why is his internet moving out? So I do have a clipboard. You've seen it before, haven't you, Beth? Yeah. It's a it's a legal size clipboard, and it it, it can handle everything except probably a a rifle. It can handle all the all the different um, handguns, and I do ha I do have that, but I don't carry that around with me. But anyway, Sheepdog's having some issues here. So let's see what the next slide is. Um, maintaining. Okay, yeah. This is just about maintaining. So is there anything that you have to go through your bag and um, and maintain? Meaning anything get old that you have to, to get out and put other things in there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I definitely uh, had trade out for the season because I can't carry it all. Um, but the other thing, and a lot of people ask this in the comments is what do you do about food? Do you leave it in your car? Does it, does it get old? Do you have to swap yeah. it out? And, and I do swap out food, uh, periodically. Yeah. Anything you have to maintain in yours, sheepdog? He's gone again. I don't know why his internet just got quirky. Um, I, I have food. What I've learned is I do have in my food, I've, I, I've learned even food, what I like and I don't like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I have changed out food just for the fact that sometimes I like things and sometimes I don't like other things. So, um, but, Hey, are you, are you with us now? Are you going to stay with us this time? You're going to drop off again. My best. I'm trying my best. Yeah, put your arm up. So anything in your, your bag that you have to adjust or maintain or it gets yeah, old? Yeah, I go through food, food, first aid stuff, make sure every all the first aid gear is up to date, not out of date, and uh, try to stay on it. I go through it about every quarter just to make sure nothing's going bad. Yeah. So I did my bug out bag gears. I mean, it's been a year, and I've noticed some of the Band-Aids are kind of getting funky a little bit. You ever seen that where they – even the outside of the packs are getting sticky and I'm like, okay, they got to go. And so there's a lot of things I'm learning. And then some of the, the items I have in my bug out bag, it's like the, the rubber is getting old. Cause I've had that, but you know what I mean? When rubber gets old. Yes. I don't know what yeah, it's like seals, seals on your water filters and things like that. You need to check. Yeah. And batteries. Yeah. Someone put batteries in there. So, um, so here's a good book for everyone. There's two books I'm going to recommend for everyone. This one is called um, Baseline Training Man Manual. This is, um, his name is Joe, what's it, Delaba? What's his last name? Dolio. Dolio. That, that is a good book. I know the Charlotte group is going through that book right now. Another, I mean, that's a good book. So buy that book. Um, Sheepdog loves his series. I mean, he loves it. Even almost as good as my series, but <laughs> he's never read one of my books. Um, <laughs> I know. So get that one. And also I don't even have this on there, but it's a great book. It's one of the best books as well is survival theory. One by Jonathan Hollerman has a lot of the bug out stuff in there and why things you need and why you need them. But that that's a great book as well. He, he, I think he even has a list. I mean, Everyone and their brother has a list because it's easy just to copy and paste someone else's list. So, um, but, um, and you can, uh, we're going to do questions probably next week. We're going to come back on Thursday because it's getting late. I will say this guys, if you go to that store right there, the preppernet.com slash Amazon, I have a store that a lot of the items are in my bug out bag, best's, and sheep dogs, and they're going to be adding, we'll add more. That's the actual items we have. And it's a great, it's like you can look and go, oh, the other night, um, sheep dog was teaching about water filters. So I have all the water filters he was talking about. You can go and look at them. That way you don't have to guess or, you know, boom. And we make an amazing 4%. Let me tell you what 4% on was like on last month. Or like, what was it? I sold like two thousand dollars worth and got forty dollars. Wasn't that was it forty bath or something? I don't remember. You know, it was just. I mean, we don't make a lot, but we make a. Preppernet makes a little bit. It's it's four percent. So whatever four percent of a 
thousand dollars would be what forty dollars yeah so it'd be eighty dollars for two thousand dollars so we don't prepper didn't make a lot but it what it does do is shows you the exact things that we approve and like so with that um we're going to come back on thursday we're going to have some more content but we're going to then every question that's um that you guys ask we will we will tackle sheepdog is an expert at bug out bags and he, he's just like the premier expert in all the world and beth is a female <laughs> Just digs that hole deeper, deeper. <laughs> Why do I put up with this? Why? Do I put I'm kidding. This? On Why? That. Oh my god! No, but she has. Yeah. You can tell she has a different perspective. She's an expert too. I guarantee you, one out of four hundred people in PrepperNet have gone camping with their bags and pick out the right stuff, and so she's ahead of everyone. But um, but <laughs> she's a wow. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's funny. Right, so, Boris, tell people where they can submit their questions to. Okay, I would go. Where would where should we send them to? An email or preppernet.net? I, th I was thinking email. Okay, email info at preppernet.com. Info at preppernet.com. So we'll have some emails, questions, and then you can ask them live as well next week. But preppernet dot uh, info at preppernet.com so any 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 last words there sheepdog thanks for yes, coming sir. on by the way oh thanks for having me i appreciate it i apologize for the internet issues um but uh buy once cry once on gear uh, what was that it costs a lot of, it costs a lot of money but once you buy it once you'll have it a long time Right. Um, one of those filters that I used at the class the other day, that thing has literally been everywhere with me. Um, and it's never let me down. And it wasn't, I mean, it's not really expensive, but it's not cheap. So buy once, cry once on gear, especially backpacks, water filters, mm -hmm. and boots. Boots. If you have a bug out bag and you have a get home bag and you have all these things, you should have really, really good quality footwear to support the additional weight and the terrain you may encounter. Um, now, boots are like everything else. People like certain things, and that's what they're going to get. But um, I recommend two things. Go to an outfitter, REI, or a local outfitter, test packs. They can put weight in them. They'll size them. They'll fit them. They'll make them fit you comfortably with the weight and get recommendations from them for good walking shoes and uh and i appreciate everybody's time and uh, it wasn't a squirrel by the way it was a chip it wasn't a squirrel so, yeah they got Sheep dog. it's just good to have you on man you're, well, i you're appreciate it and, but um yeah we look forward to thursday we'll get some questions answered and yeah we'll try to have some, maybe some gear to show but um i do appreciate everyone's time yeah and that's it. Oh, wait, no, Beth. <laughs> I feel very underappreciated right now. Uh, I appreciate it, Beth. Thank you. Thank you, Sheepdog. Uh, my final words would be, you know, use your gear. That's it. Use your gear. Use your gear. Test it and use it. Okay. My final words would be um, join us Thursday night. <laughs> at 9 30 send a question in info at preppernet.com and then thursday night we're gonna get in a little bit I mean, we're gonna answer everyone's questions and we'll have some more information on bug out bags as well maybe i'll have an update on putting all my stuff back in when you take it out it's overwhelming i have three bags down there it's overwhelming the stuff and then then I feel guilty because I'm like, oh, I got the nice one in my bag, but in my wife's bag, I got the piece of crap one. <laughs> so I was feeling guilty on some things as well. I've got to work through. So anyway, okay, guys. Hey, thanks for joining us this evening. Hey, preppernet.live, preppernet.net. Join us over there. I'm going to post uh, our, our little sheet like everyone else has a list, and we'll, we'll see you guys there. Till next time, guys. We'll talk to you guys later. Thank you.